Minecraft is one of those games that seems to attract an endless supply of new players. And the great thing about this is that there are so many different directions that the game can take you. Whether you are a creative builder or somebody that likes PvP, maybe you're someone that just likes to go and explore the world and see what's on offer. Maybe you prefer more of a challenge and like to take on the bosses and really challenge yourself into the game. Maybe you just like to complete all the advancements and just progress through everything possible in game. It just has so much to offer for every type of player. However, when starting out a brand new survival world, it's not always easy to make the most efficient use of your time and get off to the best start. So today I'm going to share with you 14 tips that will help you get off to a great start and just make the game more enjoyable, especially early on when it's a little bit more of a struggle getting to where you want. So with that being said, let's start with tip number one. Tip number one is pretty simple. Don't waste your time with wooden tools. They're just not very effective and it's much better to jump straight onto stone tools. So start by grabbing yourself a crafting table, craft yourself a few sticks and then jump straight onto a wooden pickaxe and a wooden pickaxe only because this is the only item you're gonna need to grab yourself some stone and you can jump onto stone tools. You can dig down to find some stone underground dig into a mountain side or just anywhere where you can find a bit of stone. If you come across some coal, be sure to grab that as well because that'll be very handy for cooking food early game. Now you wanna grab as much stone as you can and then go ahead and craft all your stone tools. These are gonna be way more effective in the long run and will just save you so much time rather than wasting it, crafting up some wooden tools and then coming to stone tools later on. Tip number two, get yourself a bed as soon as possible. So as soon as you've got your stone tools, go ahead and find yourself a few sheep and then craft yourself a bed. The last thing you wanna be doing is spending your first few nights tackling bunches of zombies and skeletons. It's just not gonna make the experience very nice. So make sure you get that bed early game and early as possible. Tip number three, make use of early game food sources. Grab a bunch of seeds, plant them to grow some wheat and then the wheat can be turned into bread. You can also head into a tiger forest and grab a bunch of berries. Berries are a great food source because they are very easy to grow. You can get a bunch of them in a very short period of time. Headed into a river or an ocean and grabbing a bunch of fish because the fish will always respawn. So this is a great way of getting renewable food source and fish will also replenish quite a lot of your health. Just be sure to cook them before you eat them. If you come across a village, be sure to grab up the potatoes, carrots or beetroots that you can find. These are great to grow closer to base. Just be sure to cook your potatoes first because cooking them will replenish three bars of hunger rather than one. If you come across any hay bales, be sure to gather up those because you can use those, craft them down into wheat and craft a bunch of bed. You can save on your coal early game by cooking your food on a campfire. A campfire only takes one piece of coal and will constantly burn and cook all the food you want. So if you don't have much coal early game, use a campfire to cook your food and you'll be off to a great start. Tip number four, always carry a bed with you. It's so easy to get lost in this game and be hundreds of blocks from your base. So be sure to have a bed in your inventory so that you can pop it out when the nightfall comes and sleep the night away. The last thing you wanna be doing is spending those early days tackling mobs through the night or trying to fight your way to your base. Tip five is to make use of villager houses. Now the villager houses are already there. All you gotta do is plop yourself down a bed and a few chests and you're good to go. You know, this is a great place to kind of make a temporary setup so that you can gather a bunch of resources for your actual base. And uh, yeah, it's just a place that's gonna be safe for you to sleep the night away whenever you wish while gathering supplies at the same time. Tip number six, don't kill off all of your mobs. Go ahead and lure them into pens with a piece of food and then go ahead and breed them. This way you can breed them to get more and more in the pen. Once your pen's pretty full, you can go ahead and get rid of half of them and then breed them up again. And this will give you a constant supply of food. 
and it's also handy for things with like the sheep and the cows because these are going to be a great way that you can gather up a bunch of wool especially if you're shearing the wool because you will get a lot more wool in the long run and then cows can give you leather as well as food tip number seven location 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 now Minecraft is full of so many different biomes and so many places to build. So it's important when you're starting out your first base, you want to build it somewhere that you're happy building. Don't just settle for anywhere because you just want to set up base. Make sure it's in a location you're happy with. Whether that be a plains or a tiger biome, a snow biome or savanna, maybe a desert. You know, wherever you want to build, make sure the location is suitable for what you want to be building. Because otherwise, you're just going to be demotivated, not enjoy what you're building, and not enjoy the game as a whole. You know, there are so many beautiful areas, so find the one that's right for you. Tip number eight is to plan out your base properly. Now, for this, I don't mean going ahead and laying down a bunch of floor plans everywhere. That's just going to be a bit too much. But as you guys probably know, the saying goes, failing to plan is planning to fail. So I think it's always good to have a small plan at least in place. So starting out, just make sure that your first plan for your base is suitable for what you want. Make sure that it's big enough. Make sure that it's got the kind of shape you're looking for. Make sure it's in the location you want it to be. Make sure that it's going to be suitable for everything you want, first of all, in game. Now, when you start expanding your base later on down the line, if you decide to expand from your starter base, then it's a good idea to just do a little bit at a time, you know, planning from here. Don't build this base here and then, you know, you know, 20, 30 blocks away, build something else for the sake of building it there, you know. Plan exactly from your base. Think about where is your road going to go? Is it going to be a pathway? Are you going to add some trees? Are you going to add a field? Are you going to put a connecting house to it? Think about exactly how you want each piece and plan one bit at a time. You know, doing one thing at a time will stop you from getting overwhelmed with too much at once and will help you keep more on track with what you're doing and also stop you from getting demotivated from over planning and having too much planned to do. Because sometimes planning too much can have the opposite effect. It can demotivate you because there's just too much and you don't know what to do. Tip number nine, the small details matter. Now, guys, you know as much as I do how much I love my greenery, but it's not always about the greenery. It's more about the small details. You see, anyone can make a build and it might look okay, but it's the small details that really bring everything out, whether that be adding some bushes or flower pots, a nice pathway, a little work area outside of the base or you know just a few little trees dotted here and there a little wall to section off some of the areas you know these really make such a difference i mean look at the little flower beds here it just adds to the build and it just brings that last little bit of detail out added in small little things like a little pumpkin patch little sort of patio areas or tables even things such as your pathways, make sure that they're sort of laid out the way you want them to and make sure that they kind of, there's pathways in, to get around everything, you know, because these little details just add so much life to the area. You know, the key here is not to overdoing it, it's just to make the place feel used. You know, even things such as adding in a nice little pond as we have done here. I mean, look at all the little details on the pond. It just creates a whole lot of life from adding in these little sort of Japanese lilies, little bushes and flowers around the pond. It just brings the whole world to life and adds those little details that make the place feel like it's been used and lived in. Tip number 10 is to try and get fortune free enchantment on your pickaxe as soon as possible. Now, I cannot tell you how much time this saves when you're trying to gather up resources such as iron, gold, diamonds, coal, redstone, lapis, or even copper. Because fortune free enchantment allows you to get up to four items drop per, per block, it will just save you so much time. Whereas you'd normally get maybe a bunch, say six sort of diamonds, you might be able to get up to 20 odd diamonds just from one collection of them. And it just adds up so much quicker and saves so much time when you're trying to gather up resources. So 
Getting this enchantment early game will make such a huge difference to your resource gathering speed and will get you off to such a better start and you'll be finding yourself spending a lot less time mining and much more time building and doing the things that you really enjoy the most. And that's the most important thing. You wanna maximize the time doing the things you really enjoy and kind of minimize the time that I spend doing things that feel more like chores. Tip number 11 is pay attention to those coordinates. I cannot tell you how many times I've been wandering out on an adventure, getting a little bit lost, and then I have to stop for a minute and think, did I go right? Did I go left? Or did I go straight? Which way did I go? <laughs> you guys have been there a thousand times and then you wander off in another direction and then before you know it, you've completely lost track of where you are, where your base is, and no idea which way to start going. So pay attention to your coordinates because this will make it much easier when trying to chase your way back to your base or to a location that you've been building in. So always keep track of those coordinates guys, especially early game because early game is much easier to get lost. Tip number 12 comes more as a pre-warning really, and that is to always make backups of your worlds. And I cannot stress how important this is because I've had so many people comment on my channel telling me that they've been following through one of my big build series such as my castle or dock series and they've got halfway through it or even near to completing it and their world has got corrupt. And it's just heartbreaking to hear guys, I know how much work has gone into it, especially some of the people who are building these in survival and it's just so much work and effort and I can understand why this can be demotivating for someone when they've been playing for so long to lose a world and then to not want to build again because you know there's so much work there so make sure that you make backups of these whether it be another backup on your pc on an external hard drive or even into a cloud or something like that just make sure you get yourself backups of every single save you have and make regular backups so that you've got copies of the work that you've been doing on that world Tip number 13 is to stay motivated. Now, I know this is easier said than done, but there are a few things that you can do that will really help keep you motivated to continue building. One is to make sure that you have plenty of projects on the go. It's so easy to be constantly involved in one project and then you just find yourself getting fed up and bored of being one stuck in the same area or two constantly building the same style of things. So, go ahead and make sure that you've got plenty of different projects to keep yourself occupied. You know, make sure they're different things. Don't make it all the same thing, whether that be building in one style and maybe having a separate sort of uh, village or town and build it in a different style, or maybe a redstone project, you know, something where you can break it up so that you don't get overwhelmed and fed up of building the same thing over and over. Tip number 14, and by far the most important one, is to explore the world and just have some fun. I mean, that's what it's all about after all. From exploring the overworld and then heading deep under the ocean, seeing if you can uncover some secret hidden loot, maybe some buried treasure, or even heading into the nether and taking on some of the ghasts or some kind of mob in game. You know, there's so many challenges out there that the game has just got an endless supply of new things that you might not have discovered yet. You know, maybe you want to take on some of the advancements. I mean, the advancements list is huge. And once you uncover one, you uncover more. So why not check out some of the advancements, go in game and see what there is to offer. Maybe those advancements will help you learn more about the game or find something that you didn't know existed that you really enjoy and might inspire you to do something else. I mean, there is just so many different things that you can do in game and the challenges are just endless. But above all else, just make the most of it and enjoy the game because that's the most important thing. And I'll catch you in the next one.